with a cabinet full of brands and a stock up nearly 600% in the last five years. Can this cross-border maker of spirits have enough pop to stay on the top shelf? All right, how much longer can Constellation Brands, the Uber Kramer fave liquor company, keep roaring higher? You know Constellation is the company that imports popular Mexican beers, Corona, Modelo, Pacifico in the U.S., although they also have a major wine business, Red Hot Prisoner brand, some a lot of those we're going to talk about, as well as selling harder spirits like uh, Casanova Tequila, bestseller at Bar San Miguel, and Zvedka Vodka. Here's a stock that's up more than 26% just this year alone, powered by some phenomenal numbers. Two weeks ago, Constellation reported yet another terrific quarter, a true blowout of incredible proportions, a 36-cent earnings beat off a buck 98 basis. Constellation gave strong guidance, and its beer business continues to be on fire. The stock folded up 5% on the news, although since then it's been trading sideways, maybe an opportunity. Let's take a closer look with Rob Sands, the fabulous president and CEO of Constellation Brands. Find out more more about how his company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Sands, welcome back to Man Buddy. Good to see you, Rob. Have a seat. How you doing? All right. Now, Rob, your, uh, your beer, let's just start there, is responsible for 60% of the category's growth. What are the other guys doing wrong? What are you doing right? Well, we just happen to be at the right place at the right time, right? So we have the most iconic Mexican beer brands. Uh, Mexican beer is on fire. Our brands in particular are on fire. The demographics are in our favor, so uh, it's all great. Now, I have to tell you, at Bar San Miguel, the one that I just didn't think because I have a place in Mexico, the, not a great beer in Mexico, I can't keep it in stock. Pacifico, what is going on with this magnificent brand up 20% depletions? I mean, incredible. Hey, that's going to be the next really hot uh, beer brand in our portfolio. Um, you know, we've had tremendous success with Corona. Modelo Especial has now become the number two import in the United States, and Pacifico is coming up right behind it. It's, um, it's going to be a fantastic, fantastic uh, growth, growth driver. Meanwhile, you have got a strategy. It's premiumization. Uh, one of my favorite whiskeys. Didn't know you bought it. I didn't this high west. I want to take a, a little swig here. Well, you can't really swig great whiskey. I'd like you to take a sip. Well, you should take a little sip of it. All it's right. great. I'll take a little sip, too. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, so. Mm, great. What have you been, wow. What have you been able to accomplish like that. With that since you bought it? Oh, well, you know, this, this brand has been growing um, in IRI channel about 70%. Um, mm. We expect it to continue to grow. It's going to become a, a, a major brand. This is a really hot category, right. bourbon and rye. This is a really hot brand, um, you know, ultra premium. Mm -hmm. uh, it really covers all the bases when it comes okay. to whiskey. Now, Ballas, I know that you weren't that thrilled this quarter. But you look, when you have everything's going great, I mean, a lot of the other guys would kill for the growth, candidly. And you've got a new one here that is... Uh... This is our unfiltered uh, Sculpin. Um, Sculpin is really the flagship of the Ballast Point line and is a huge award-winning product, this new unfiltered product. Um, we think it's going to be really hot. All right, let's try All right, this. All right, cheers. Not an That's IPA guy, but it's good. It's good. Really good. I'm, I'm a Corona guy, as you know. And so now you bought this. Uh, recently, uh, Diageo paid a, a billion dollars for something that frankly kind of sells okay. This is the hottest one in the category, Casa Noble. What did you pay for about $20 million? Yeah, between 20 and $30 million. It's less than exactly. a billion, right? It's a little less than a billion. <laughs> and, and you're if already, I have my numbers You right. are already blowing it out. Now, you also do an incredible premium. This is not. This is the most expensive tequila right. we serve. That's the Alta Bieza. It's, um, it's uh, extra Anejo, which means that it's um, aged more than the typical Anejo. And this one is aged in um, Robert Mondavi uh, barrels. French oak wine barrels. So it gives it a very unique characteristic. This one sells for, you know, about $1,500 a bottle. Mm. I gotta ask you, fifteen hundred bucks. Were you surprised? It, really at basically what they're paying for Casamigos over there, Diage. Were you surprised at that billion? I mean, you know, because I thought it was a big price. I, big, right? I, I know those guys. They're good guys, though. And Casamigo right. is a um, is a hot brand, and right. um, you know, it's got Clooney um, um, and Randy Gerber and Mike Malman behind it. So, they're good guys. Um, they're good guys. Hey, yeah, they're good we, guys. We wish them all the luck in the exactly. world. There's enough With room. The category. There's enough room for everybody <laughs> in right, this now, particular category. Uh, when I was in Italy, I didn't know I was drinking your stuff, candidly. And uh, the Rafino, you doing, uh, these are great numbers you're putting up in wine. 
Rafino is an incredibly hot yeah. brand in the United States. Chianti's uh, hot. This is the new top of the line. This it's is super an, tusky. Yeah, this is an IGT wine, so it's not a classified wine. Um, but it's very high end. It's made in our uh, estates in uh, Tuscany. I saw your tweet that yes, you were in yes. Tuscany. I know. I was about 10 miles from here. Hopefully, we're drinking lots of Rufino we'll, products. It's our table one. This is one of the best. It doesn't we, get, did, we didn't get the expensive. doesn't get any better than this. Mm. Wow. Ooh, that's good. And then finally, Super Premium US. Just bought. Right. Working? Schrader. Schrader. Schrader's claim to fame is that it's probably got the most 100-point awards from the top wine critics of any... From the Parkers, any, from the libraries. Parker, from the, Lauby, yeah. 19 100 points. Okay, this is a great wine. We um, This is made in the Tokelon Vineyards, which mm. Constellation owns the vast majority of Tokelon, so this was a perfect fit. Uh, for Constellation, this um, if you could get it retails for about 250 bucks. If you um, okay. if if you if you can't get it through the wine list because it's mostly sold DTC right. direct to consumer, you're going to pay about 1500 dollars for it. Wow. Okay, so the strategy here is to go higher, higher, higher. That mm -hmm. is very different. One of the things that's very clear with beer that you talk about on the call, which is great, the the regular the uh, premium domestics just aren't have no growth at all. Right? They have no growth at all. But you're putting on all this growth. If people like premium, now I know that people, when they go out, they can buy the bud for home. But if they go out, they want the premium. It's part of the experience, right? Yes. That's what you're mm -hmm. playing into. Exactly. And it's working. Now, I wanted to try to get a sense. Um, I want to go back to Pacifico for sure. a second. How does a beer get hot? I mean, this beer is not hot in Mexico. You like know, how does a beer get hot? Yeah. Um, First of all, if anybody had the answer to that, um, right. we probably wouldn't be sitting here uh, even having this chat. <laughs> but um, it's really about consumers voting with their feet, okay? It's the consumer who makes any product, um, really in any industry, right. but in particular beer, uh, it's what makes a beer hot. Um, it's consumers, uh, they like the product, it, it, it's an image thing, it, it makes them feel good when they drink it, it fits their image of themselves when they hold it in their hand. It's a whole variety of things that, um, are really hard to uh, capture. Well, well, the reason I mention it is because in the call, at one point, you say, you talk about retailers. And you say, the, if, uh, it makes no sense to have 20% of the store retailers allocated to 5 billion crafts that nobody's ever heard of, and then have the vast majority of the rest of the stores allocated to low-margin declining brands. If you were to convince the retailers, if they watch the show, they would change dramatically. What would it do to sales if the retailers recognize what's going on? Well, that is something that we're working on. We call that category management, where we um, management. where we go in and we give advice, um, objective advice, to retailers about how they should, uh, for instance, set their shelves. And um, obviously, okay, they should be allocating more shelf space to the higher margin faster moving premium items. So, right. you know, again, our portfolio, Corona, Modelo Especial, Pacifico, these are very high margin um, beers, very fast moving right. um, items, and they actually uh, are under allocated Wait, but shelf space. Couldn't that be the next leg? Couldn't it, that be 2018? Because there's one case of Pacifico next is, to one case of Tecate, which nobody's drinking, or Soul, which I can't give away at my bar. It is the next leg, which it really next goes leg. to the fact that there's huge uh, upside, even right. in this portfolio, because as we are able to expand shelf space, we get more um, pack sizes mm -hmm. in there. Um, as retailers start realizing that they're over allocated to, to low ones. margin, low growth brands, and they need to uh, allocate more space to higher mar th their go to okay. is going to be the Constellation portfolio, Wait. period. And one last question. Uh, Th two and three quarters ago, all we talked about was uh, import tax and how bad it's going to hurt you. I, and no one's talking about it anymore. What happened? How did that dialogue end? Well, I, I think it's pretty much um, all good news that we're there right now. Um, you know, basically, uh, the uh, administration, um, or I should say Congress, has really stopped talking about BAT, yeah. um, the Border Adjustability yeah. Tax, as, uh, as uh, part of tax reform. Um, you know, it seems as if, uh, as it relates to NAFTA renegotiations with Mexico, that, 
you know, er everybody's getting reasonable relative right. to that. And, and we're back to a fundamental point um, r relative to uh, President Trump and his administration, which is um, if he can get through the things that he intended to get through, tax reform, right. lower taxes, repatriation, this is going to be a big boost uh, to business in this country and the economy. So, you know, we're, we're actually optimistic about these things at this um, point. Well, so, I, to me, it's all got, good news. You got a great flight path. All the acquisitions have worked. It, it's just a remarkable situation. Premiumization, categorization. I'm looking for retail to be the next big leg for you. I think it's going to happen. That's Rob Sands, President and CEO of Constellation Brands, SDZ, perhaps the best performing stock that we recommend on Mad Money. Mad Money's back here today. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.